Hello and welcome to the What's New in Compressed 2020 Build 8000. My name is Matt Hyland and I'm the General Manager here at CodeRare. Today I'm going to go through some of the new features that we've introduced into this latest build as well as the code changes that come along with the 2019 Code Edition that is now available for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Now before I get into the uh, code changes that some of you may be interested in, in learning about, I want to talk about a new feature that we've introduced and we're calling it Advanced Reporting. So what we're going to do is right at the top, we're going to come up here to the action menu and we're going to come down and open up our set mode options. And on the reporting page, which is located down here at the bottom, there's a switch right here called advanced reporting. We're going to check that. We're going to click OK and we're going to run the report. And just to show you what this advanced reporting looks like. All right, so we're in the report. I'm just going to grab a cylinder report. Here's your report, but now when you come down, you're going to see the equations laid out in a much clearer manner for review. So you can see you've got a numerator, denominator on some of these equations, and this is really going to help when we start coming to some of the more advanced equations for wind, seismic, your saddle analysis, things like that. For example, here's the saddle report. I'll just scroll through this quickly, but you can see here it's a lot easier to read when you're going through it trying to verify or you're just reviewing calculations, things like that. So that's a new feature that we've added in for you this year. So now I'm going to switch back to the model. And now what I want to do is I want to talk about the 2019 code edition. Now there's a, you know, there's always a numerous amount of changes. You can always go to table uh, the change list at the code book as well. But I want to touch on some of the big ones for you. So and if you have existing designs that you are modeling and you want to bring up to the new code, what you'll do is come up to your codes menu, select ASME, and on the list you'll see 2019. Again, you've got all the previous editions as well, so there's no need to keep older installs available, or you don't need older installs to get older code editions. So that's where it is for you as well. Then any new designs will default to the 2019. But what were some of the changes that were in there? Uh, one of the things, if you guys remember, there was a code case 2695 that was released in the last few years, and that allowed you to use the Division II rules for a Division I vessel. Well, those rules have now been rolled into the code, and they now fall under Mandatory Appendix 46. So let's just open up a cylinder here. I'll just right-click on it. And what you'll see here is that instead of use code case 2695 that you've seen in the past, you'll now see use Appendix 46 and in brackets use the Division 2 rules. Now if you go up to the codes menu and select ASME you can actually apply this for the entire vessel if you like or you can actually pick and choose which component. So if you say I just want this cylinder run to it or I want to look at a specific nozzle you can select that on those dialogs and the Division 2 rules will be used to run it. Now one of the nice things about these rules is that it is an alternative set of rules. So if you choose, I just, you know, at your discretion, you feel you want to use these rules, you can, and you can review that in UG 16, where they lay out um, the definition of how you can use those rules. Okay. So the next big feature I want to move into, and this is going to affect a lot of you out there, is what happened to SA 105 um, for your MDMT rating. So now the uh, forged flange materials it used to be a default to curve B material. It's now been moved to curve A. So let's just open up a flange here, like so. So if you have a flange material, let's say A105, you're now going to see the basic uh, uh, curve to be curve A. But if you like to get it back to curve B, you can. And if you go to the notes, uh, I believe it's in UCS 66, they'll say um, you can up, uh, curve B will apply to SA105 for flange or forged flanges produced to fine grain practice and normalized, normalized and tempered, or quenched and tempered after forging. So in other words, if you can get the material supplied in the heat treated condition and produce a fine grain practice and normalized, as you see here, I've checked these options, A105 will now be a curve B material. So that's how you'll do that. And since we're on the topic of the flange dialogue right here, we want to talk about another code case, code case 2901. Now, 2901 was a method for you to assess external loadings acting on flanges. Essentially, it would derate an MAWP or it would consider that in the pressure rating of the flange. Those, that code case has now been rolled into paragraph UG44. And what that does is it gives you a way to assess the uh, 
loadings that are on the flanges if you feel that you need to consider them. So all you have to do is simply check the option, consider external loadings on flange MAWP rating, and you'll see that the new rating will be assessed for you. And I'll click OK, click OK. I'm going to rerun the report quickly. And I'm just going to pull over my reports here. I'm going to go to N1 because that was the flange that we looked at. And in the report, you're going to see the MAWP reduction due to external loads. So that's where you will see this in here as well. So again, if you're familiar with that code case 2901, they've just rolled it into UG44 for you that way. Okay. All right. Now, one of the next features I want to show you, I'm going to switch over to a new file, is what we're calling the nozzle freeze. So as you can see, I have a very simplistic vessel. I've got three cylinders, three nozzles. But what if a situation comes up where either you want to break that eight foot shell into two sections, maybe we've got material from a last job we can use, or for whatever reason, we have to increase the length of a cylinder, things like that. And once we get the model done, we don't want to have to go back and adjust our nozzle, say if we were modeling from a seam, for example. Well, now in Compress, what you can do is if we open up our set mode options, so again, back up to the action menu and select set mode options right here. On the environment tab, you'll see right here, there is a new option right here for freeze attachment location. So in other words, we're going to maintain the elevation from datum when possible. Okay, so we'll just check that. We're going to click OK. And let's say we need to increase this bottom shell can. So I'm going to right click on it, click next, and let's make this 192 inches long, click OK. And as you can see, the nozzles stayed in their current position. So again, this gives you more flexibility when you're trying to manipulate the main shell so that let's say a client comes back with revisions and you need to make uh, changes to the shell sections, but you've already got things set. It's going to drastically increase your time to get those revisions done and back to the customer for review as well. So those are some of the big features uh, that we put in. Again, uh, a lot of this, the uh, code changes that have been implemented uh, for you as well. Now, if you'd like to see a full listing of all the changes that we've made for you, you simply just come up here to the Help menu, come down and select the View History, and you can review all the code changes that were implemented in Compress with a detailed description of that as well. Now, if you'd like a little bit more information or you want to see how we can help you with your organization, please don't hesitate to contact sales at coder.com or give us a call at 941-927-2670.